Twas the best of times. Twas the worst of times. Yeah, that pretty much sums up week one in the NFL for us Giants fans. Let's start the video. What's going on YouTube? This is Mustafa Love with Hearthstone Media. Thanks for tuning in again, but if this is your first time checking out the channel, please think about hitting the like or subscribe button to be notified. The next time we make a video like this, I promise you that you will not wake up to something like this. If you hit the like or subscribe button, or maybe you will if you don't, it's your call. Without further ado, let's get to the video. So Giants fans, week one in the NFL giveth and it taketh away. It gave us some great joy in watching those Eagles not fly high and watching the Dallas Cowboys be the Dallas Cowboys. And then it gave us our New York football Giants against the Pittsburgh Steelers on Monday night. Now, for a quick game recap, Big Ben looked like Big Ben of old. His passes, when he had time, were on point, and his receivers made plays for him. He was also very hard to bring down, as Ben usually is. It's strange because he's like as slow as a tree running with a broken ankle. But the guy is like super hard to bring down, and he was just that in this game. And we were, in fact, in this game until that goal line interception. Our defense was playing really, really well, doing good at holding up and getting us off the field on third down, which was our biggest problem. Well, one of our bigger problems last season, getting off the field on third down. We also forced about four or five three and outs, which was something that seemed like never happened for us last season. Till Snell got loose a little bit later, they were doing a really good job holding the run game in check and didn't give up any big plays either in the run or passing game. They didn't surrender a play of over 30 yards all game. And I think over the past two seasons, we might have been last or if not last, second to last in the league at giving up plays over 30 yards. So have to applaud the defense because they definitely showed improvement in this first week. All while getting solid pressure on the quarterback, which is one thing we all hoped for and wondered was going to happen. Where were they going to get their pressure? They got a lot of pressure and, and rush up the middle, which was great to see. But we knew we had a solid defensive front. And I'll talk about that later when I give out my player and uh, unit grades. But um, seeing the pressure coming in, Lorenzo Carter was really good. And I'll talk about him again um, later on in the video. So I mean, the defense was solid. Our Achilles heel and our biggest problem in this game was run blocking. We could not... I mean, I don't know if I've seen run blocking as bad as I've seen it in this game. And I feel like if this line doesn't course correct by next week, I think they got one solid week. You're going to see some changes on that offensive line. You're either going to see Matt Pear and Shane Lemieux in, in, in that center and that left tackle, or you're going to see a combination one or the other. But some changes are going to be made because that offensive line was porous. Their pass protection was decent at best solid at some points never great I don't feel like at any one point of time in the game maybe they had a couple of plays where they were solid but I don't think they had maybe one series the series in which we actually did give up the interception at the goal line that was the best the offensive line had played in a solid series but Daniel Jones had to escape the pocket a couple of times during that drive and kind of make things happen because the pocket did break down so can't even give him that much credit on that drive so that was our weakness in this game. We could not establish a run. And if you can't, I mean, not even establish the run. We couldn't create a running lane. And I mean, that's just terrible. We were also exploited and getting killed in the slot. Now, aside for a couple of sideline catches, Pittsburgh did most of their damage in short yardage in the slot. And that's where we saw a lot of problems, a lot of miscommunication, some between Holmes and Valentine, some between Holmes and Love. Pittsburgh did run a couple of really good rub and bump routes where, you know, our guys kind of got really intertwined, locked in on each other. One uh, surrendered a touchdown and one surrendered another critical first down. But uh, they were really good at that and we were really bad at defending that. Hopefully we go back to the drawing board and as a defense, you know, um, we can correct that going into the next week. Some of that could be rust and, and new players. You know, we got Darnie Holmes. He was, you know, a rookie cornerback out there in the slot. You got Julian Love who's a second year guy. A lot of new moving pieces there. So a lot of things was lost in that slot and they kind of really ate us up in the slot. But if you can hold Juju Smith suit did I say that? That's such a hard name to say. If you can hold Juju to six catches for 66 yards in a game, you got to pat yourself on the back on that. Now, mind you, he did catch every pass that was thrown to him. He was targeted six times. He caught six balls. 
But again, six catches for 69, 66 yards for a receiver of his caliber, you, you know, you can't be too mad about that. Um, you'll take that any given week, any given Sunday, you'll take Juju Smith-Schuster, six catches, 66 yards. Unfortunately, he had two touchdowns as part of those six catches, but you'll take that. So, um, you know, how much can we really beat up on the secondary? They've looked worse in the past. So I will say that the secondary play for this game was much more improved than a lot of the secondary play I've seen in years prior. So if we want to hang it, you know, as fans, we're going to hang our hats on something. We can definitely say we saw improvement in the secondary and really from almost all facets of the, the ball, except for in the run game, we pretty much seen some improvement. Now, as far as our offense goes, we can sum that up to one thing, run blocking, run blocking. I mean, that was evident. We were trash. I think Saquon's first eight or nine nine carries he was hit or taken down you know behind the line of scrimmage the first eight times he touched the ball I don't know if the run blocking was a, a blocking scheme thing I don't know if it was a play calling thing I don't know what it was but I have never seen that many plays broken down on the snap Barkley looking to make an impact as a runner once again and negative it's one thing to have it broken down at the point of contact point of impact point of something but broken down on the snap i see nick gates look completely lost in and where he was supposed to be going and he's the center he snaps the ball completely went the wrong way and let allows a guy to come straight up the middle and get saquon as literally as soon as the ball snapped i seen that from him i seen that from cam fleming they were just horrible in their run block and we couldn't get anything going I don't know why Garrett didn't maybe try some things later on in the game, try some things not so much up the middle because we couldn't get anything going up the middle. But he didn't abandon the run, and I, and I like that because Pat Schumer took those opportunities where we couldn't get anything going early and just completely abandoned the run last year. So I like the fact that he stuck with it and kept trying to chop that wood, but it really just wasn't happening. And then once we got behind, it was just a no-go. But we could not run the ball, and that was really the iso facto of our offense. That was the game. It also made it very difficult when we got in the red zone because we hadn't established that we could run the ball. So we had no confidence in trying to run the ball. The first time we got down in the red zone after the fumble punt, uh, we tried, but we got you know basically stuffed in the line of scrimmage. And then we had to go with the passes, which led to the field goal. But it all starts with the run. Hopefully, we can correct that from the line going forward. That was one thing we didn't think we'd have an issue with this season, which was run blocking. We were pretty solid in run blocking for most of the games last season. So we didn't think coming out the gate we wouldn't be able to block the run. But again, new offensive line unit, a couple of new pieces in there. Nick Gates had a new position, new left tackle in there. That contributes to it. But, you know, and then Pittsburgh does have a really solid front four and a decent linebacking core. But so you put those combinations together. I mean, you got Saquon Barkley with 15 carries and six yards. No one could have foreseen that to start the game. Had that not been the case, I think this game is a, it's just a completely different game had that not been the case. So now, guys, to my player and coach's grades. So I'm going to start with the slugs and slouches and the, just the trash that was out there. I'm not going to go through every player, so don't worry. Just sit tight. Just some of the more notable guys, some of the ones that stood out either because of their poor play or because of their good play and some of the main guys on offense and defense. Now, every Ingram in this game was almost about as poor as anybody could be playing tight end in a game. Evan Ingram was, was terrible in this game. Steelers bring some pressure. Jones gets the ball out and the catch is dropped. He dropped two legit, he had two legitimate balls that he actually dropped and another three balls that probably hit him on the hands that could have been caught that he dropped. I don't know what was going on at Evan Ingram. We expected big things of him. He was heavily featured in the offense and was targeted more times than any other receiver. He just couldn't corral the ball in. Uh, didn't really get a, as much separation as you usually would see him in. And he was featured, like, again, heavily in the game. A lot of stuff was short. They didn't really get him out wide. We played a lot of bunch-style offense, which I basically projected and hoped we would. I hope we would see a lot of those two tight end sets. and But they really weren't working for us. But I think that could be a strength for us going forward. We do present mismatches there. And it did work out for somebody like Caden Smith, who made a couple of really nice plays. Um, but Evan Ingram just really couldn't get it going and we couldn't get the run game going. If you can't get the run game going and you're playing in the bunch set, you're kind of just like kind of treading wheels there. So Evan Ingram in my book, this game gets a D. <laughs> yeah. Now, I was disappointed that I didn't see more from Dalvin Tomlinson. At one point in time, I had to wonder, was he injured or was he even in the game? Now, I don't know as far as his snaps went. Was he in a full snap count? Because I knew he was splitting time with B.J. Hill and probably spelling uh, uh, Leonard Williams. 
but I really didn't see an impact from Dalvin Thompson. He actually only had one, one tackle. I expected a little bit more from him, especially after getting the captain's badge after the roster was named, after the captains was named, which I failed to mention in my last video where I brought up who all made captains. He got the captain's badge in the defensive front, and he just didn't make an impact. So I would love to see more from Dalvin Thompson. We're all expecting more from him. So hopefully he can step it up and be more impactful next game. But in this game, he didn't do much of anything. I don't even know if I could really give him a grade. But since I didn't know he was out there, I'll give him a D for Dalvin. So the only two names that need to be mentioned from the linebacking core is Blake Martinez and Lorenzo Carter. Now, first I'll start with Blake Martinez. Blake Martinez was all over the field. Pursued and knocked down. Blake Martinez, the tackling machine. Um, he was a tackling machine. And even though I'm a huge Ryan Conley fan and want him to still be on the team, after seeing Blake Martinez in blue and the way he played yesterday, I could see why we moved on from Ryan Conley. It is levels to this. He was all over the field, sideline to sideline. He had about eight tackles and a tackle for loss. He really seemed to be all over the ball and everywhere the ball was and where he needed to be. Also, man in that linebacking core, one of the biggest problems that we had last year was getting killed and getting gouged by the tight ends and the running backs. In this game, we only gave up about six receptions for about 24 total yards from the tight ends and running backs combined. I will take that any single week of the year. Now, mind you, some of that is the secondary, some of that is the safety play, some of that is the pass rush. But we were getting gouged at the tight end and running back position all last year. So giving up only 24 yards to a solid tight end core that Pittsburgh has and a you know, solid running back, running back and core from them to only give up 24 yards, I'll take that. So Blake Martinez, Blake Martinez is going to get a B plus from me. And then on to Lorenzo Carter. Now Lorenzo Carter was, again, another guy that was all over the field. He was very impactful, especially early on in the game. Seemed to be like right there every single time. Was getting pressure on the quarterback. Got a couple of hits on Big Ben. Got Big Ben on the ground a couple of times. So I was really feeling his impact. And I felt like, and I said it as I was watching the game because I was tweet, tweeting live uh, during the game, you know, those pressures would become sacks. Now, he didn't necessarily get a sack, but some of his pressures did lead to sacks later on. So Lorenzo Carter, I'm really liking what I'm seeing from him. From him, uh, I mean, I need a little bit more if he's going to be, you know, our main pass rusher coming off that outside. But I like what I've seen from Lorenzo Carter. Uh, I think he's going to make great strides this season as we saw him in um, preseason. I think Lorenzo Carter is primed and ready. I'm going to give him a B- minus for this game. Now, the defensive front, I'm going to grade them all in a whole. As a grade for the whole defensive front, they're going to get a B+. Plus. They were very solid, got a lot of pressure up the middle. Leonard Williams finally got that darnest sack that we've been waiting for him to get. And again, I said in the game that those pressures will become sacks. And almost right after I said that in a tweet on cue, they got that sack. Then you had another sack from Dexter Lawrence. Can't get him to the ground yet, but now they sling him down. Another tackle from Loss. They were really getting a lot of pressure up the middle. And if we can get pressure up the middle, that's going to make our defense a whole nother beast. They were also very solid at stopping the run. They stopped. They held Pittsburgh's run in check until later on in the game. I don't really kind of know what happened there. I don't know if it was like the weight was lifted out of them with the interception, whatever. But they were playing really solid. They held their own on the offensive line. They looked very, I mean, on the defensive line, they looked very respectable holding that front. They were not getting beat up or banged around. They looked like a real defensive unit. So for that, I will give them a B plus. And now for the offense. Only a couple of people to really mention. I got Sterling Shepard. Sterling Shepard is going to get a... Eh, what am I going to get Sterling Shepard? I'll give Sterling Shepard a B for his effort. Sterling Shepard was thrown to six times. He had six targets. He caught all six passes. He had 47 yards. Doesn't really seem that impactful in the stat sheet, but two of those catches were for first downs. So you can't really get mad at a person or a guy for, you know, catching every ball thrown to him. So for that, I will give him a B. Um, he made the plays that he needed to make when he needed to make. Now, as for Saquon Barkley, I wanted to give Saquon Barkley a B-, minus, but Saquon Barkley missed a couple of blocks. One of those blocks led to a sack. Now, he was really good in the passing game. Jones in heavy traffic, flips it short. Barkley's got room. Saquon still running <laughs> he hurdles made the play that he could spot. make. In the passing game, had a couple of big runs after catch because we know he couldn't create anything for himself on the run game. Now, that is not his fault. The offensive line and run blocking was so bad, he literally should take absolutely no blame for the fact that he had 15 carries for six yards because every single time he touched the Second ball, down two is or three Pittsburgh still defenders were around him on the snap. So you Mark can't really blame him for that. But, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm taking it away from him because he missed a couple of blocking assignments. Um, you know, 
didn't really do anything over special. So I couldn't really see myself giving him that B minus. So for this game, sadly enough, I'm going to have to give my man Saquon Barkley a C my, a C plus. Now for the man you've been waiting for me to talk about, Daniel Jones. Now, what can I say about Daniel Jones in this game? Daniel Jones was very solid in this game. Coming across, that opens up the middle of the field. And then he makes a great throw. Daniel Jones showed improvement from last year in this game. Daniel Jones did away with some of his rookie mistakes in this game. But Daniel Jones also made some rookie mistakes and he threw an interception at the goal line that more than likely cost us the game. We were in the game up until that point. Had he not made that bonehead play, trying to make something happen in a game and in a point in the game we didn't need to make anything happen we were only down six points at that time had he just thrown the ball away took the sack we could have got the field goal that changes the whole complexity of the game if he does not throw that interception that interception was the doom and gloom for us it started the downward spiral from there we could not come up and pittsburgh has basically ran away with it the last touchdown that he got was very much a throw in throw away pittsburgh was of course defending but not trying as hard and to make it worse on that drive where he threw the interception, it was a beautiful drive. It was a drive that had lasted over eight minutes in the third quarter that showed him escape, run for a first down, you know, elude a sack, a uh, big catch by Sterling Shepard for a first down. Evan Ingram had finally got a catch. Saquon had a nice catch. It was a nice, really beautiful drive, all devoid of any running. I think in that drive, maybe that was the first time Saquon had ran the ball for positive yards with a run that was about three or four yards. So devoid of any running other than his own leg power, you know, the drive was, was good. It was solid. We were moving the ball. And then comes that play that was very unnecessary. Now, for his pluses. He held onto the ball. He had a great pocket awareness. He did not fumble the ball, which is one of the things that we were looking at heavily. We saw one play early in the game where he basically felt that pocket, that Guy pressure around him. Knew he was Jones. about to get hit. Knew he was going down. You see him wrap that ball up with two hands, hands while he was running down to the ground. Also seen another play that showed a lot of growth. A couple of times last year, I seen him try to make plays on the sideline, stretching out for a first down. One in which he dived for a first down, which is kind of lost when people think about the fumbles. Yes, he had a ton of fumbles. I think it was 16 to 18 fumbles last year, which were a lot were lost. He had a couple of those fumbles. They all wasn't in the pocket, standing behind, not knowing pocket presence, getting sacked. He fumbled the ball about three times, diving, lunging, or doing something to try to get a first down or more yardage where he was hit and fumbled the ball. So that's kind of lost when you look at the stat. This time I saw him going to that sideline and I almost cringed. I said, man, he needs one yard to get that first down. He's probably going to go for it, and he's probably going to fumble the ball, but he didn't. He ran out of bounds. We were about a yard short of the, short of the first down. We had a chance to, to, to go for it on fourth and one, but then uh, we had to delay a game or some stupid crap like that, and that kind of took us back, and we had to punt the ball. But um, it was a couple of things like that that I noticed that showed uh, great improvement. He also ran that same play, had that same thing happen almost two plays later or the next drive where he actually did get the first has some time now looking to run veers to his left tries to get to the outside turns the corner dives ahead yes he made it all the way got a little scamper made sure he got his feet in and, and got out of bounds without taking that hit without fumbling the ball without costing his team so he showed some improvements his passes when he had protection was on point now the pass blocking was decent for him i would just say decent and at some points it was fair and a couple of points it was good but just a couple of points he did have to do some nifty maneuvering back there, but Daniel Jones was solid in this game. Uh, we, we can't get too down on him for the interceptions. With the two interceptions, one, one, was, one was great defense. And he didn't read the play well, but the most important one was the one at the goal line, which was just a bonehead play. So for that, I have to give Daniel Jones a solid C+. Now on to the man of the hour, the man that probably had the best game today. Or yesterday. What am I doing this for the other day? Yeah, Vertical. Darius Slayton. So Darius Slayton is going to get an A- minus from me. He he caught yeah, almost everything that was, that was thrown to him. He had, he had uh, you know, I think he was targeted about eight or nine times. He caught six passes. Didn't have a ton of yards, but he caught, well, no. He had 100 plus yards and six passes. Caught two touchdowns. This guy is really a touchdown machine. He doesn't have to catch 15 balls for 151 yards or 55 yards like Julio Jones does, but the guy gets in the end zone. And Julio Jones just can't seem to figure out how. But, you know, the guy catches touchdowns. He's shorthanded around the goal line. You cannot beat a receiver like that. I think we might have actually really found a good, solid number one, and we found him in the later rounds of the draft. 
Kudos again to Dave Gettleman for the Darius Slayton uh, pickup. Um, and uh, he was solid out there today. Very impressive. So Darius Slayton is going to get an A-. minus. Now on to my coaching grades. And I'm only going to grade two coaches. First, I'm going to grade Jason Garrett. Now, a lot of people are blaming Jason Garrett for this, this loss. How much fault does Jason Garrett take in his loss? A good amount of it. Now, is the run blocking his fault? Was it a scheme thing? I don't know. Again, I like the fact that he stuck with the run. He didn't abandon the run. He kept calling run plays. He knows he has Saquon Barkley back there. It only takes one or two plays to get him to bust one out there. They just couldn't create a lane or a hole for Saquon Barkley. I would have liked to see him a little more fired up on the sideline. You know, somebody need to be getting the offensive line's ass about the way they were blocking. Maybe the offensive line coach was getting on him. But but they they definitely need a, a solid sit down after that performance. But other than that, I think Jason Garrett called a solid game. I like the sets. I like those bunch sets. Again, I like the two tight end sets. They just weren't working out because Evan Ingram was dropping all the balls. You can't blame Jason Garrett for Evan Ingram dropping passes. So again, what would I give Jason Garrett? Because we lost and really couldn't get our offense going in points, I can't give him more than a C plus. But I don't think he was responsible for the loss. But he's going to, of course, take a lot of heat for it. I think he called a pretty solid game. I wouldn't mind seeing another game like that called with some better run blocking. So now, last but not least, I'm going to get to the most important, well, one of the most important ratings, Joe Judge. Now, Joe Judge, what could I give Joe Judge for this game? Now, first, Joe Judge is going to lose points for me for the Corey Coleman cutting because now Golden Tate is injured. Well, he was injured now for this game. We could have used Corey Coleman out there, but instead we have Board out there. I don't think he has the same familiarity with Daniel Jones or the team or the offense. I mean, he caught two passes, but he was less impactful. I think Corey Coleman could have had a slightly more of an impact on the offense. You know, we definitely miss Golden Tate. We could have used his presence out there, especially again with every Ingram dropping passes. Other than that, I, I, I don't really know how to feel Joe Judge out in this game. I think he kept the guys head in the game when we started losing. Um, you know, the guys didn't seem to quit. They were still fighting. I don't, I mean, at some point in time, you realize you don't really have a chance in the game, but the, it never seemed like they kind of gave up. The defense was solid throughout, probably got a little discouraged after the, and I think everything went downhill after interception and the subsequent drive by Pittsburgh. But other than that, I would say Judge called the solid game, but I can't give him any more than a C minus because again, Corey Coleman being cut. I think that, that that lends to what we had going on on offense with Golden Tate being out. And then we lost. And we lost by, you know, a good deal of, of, of points. The 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 game was – it's it's hard to say the game was further away than the score. Because sometimes you see one of those late touchdowns and you're like, oh, well, the game was well out of hand way before that. And that's not the case. We had a shot in that game all the way up through late in the third quarter. And then it all went away. So the game was actually close, as close as the score indicates. But once we threw that pick and then they scored, the game was completely kind of over. It's a weird way to kind of look at a game. You really had to be watching the game. But we were in that game all the way up into the fourth quarter, basically. And then we just weren't in the game anymore. And then we got a last minute touchdown. But um, I think those all things lend to the next game, you know, getting that chemistry. They needed to go out there and show that they can put together a drive. They did put together some drives. The defense did create a turnover. The defense did get some pressure. We did have some good things that we could kind of look forward to to the next game. A lot of things that we had problems with, still having problems on that offensive line, but the defensive front looked good. My last takeaways for the game, the defensive front looked solid. Our linebacker play looked solid. It looks like we're going to have a pass rush. That was solid. Our secondary looked decent. Um, they were okay. Again, they held Big Ben to under 300 yards, under 250 actually, held the talented all-star caliber wide receiver to under 100 yards on only six catches. Those are things you can hang your hat on. Now, I'm not saying it's a moral victory, but these are things you can hang your hat on. They held Pittsburgh to just about 150 yards rushing. You know, we'll take that. They held their stud running back to basically nothing, and then he got injured. We'll take that as well. There's a lot of positives in this loss. And, I mean, one of the biggest positives is that the Cowboys and the Eagles lost. So that helps us out. And for the first time probably since RG3's rookie season, the Redskins sit atop of the NFC East solely by themselves.
I don't know how I feel about that. So look, guys, hopefully I catch you guys again. Hopefully you watched this long. I appreciate it if you did. Please hit the like, subscribe, share button. Uh, let another Giants fan or another football fan know that I'm here doing this weekly. And I'll be back in a couple of days with a preview of next week's game. And then with the pre-cap of the subsequent game that we played that week. And I'm out of here. It's been Hearthstone Media. And that's it. One. What's up, guys? Thanks for watching. If you like these videos, remember you can click my face here to subscribe or here to watch more videos. And I think I'm going to get it right this time. One.